now it is my great pleasure. Um, we get to close our day with two beautiful humans um, who I think are going to draw uh, upon so many of the themes of the past two days um, around centering older people in our work, um, co-designing and co-creating work. Um, so uh, to introduce our closing keynote today, um, it is my pleasure uh, to hand the mic over to Magda Kaczmarska, um, who is going to introduce uh, Kunle today. Over to you, Magda. Great to see you. First of all, I just want to take a moment and just do a big round of applause to all of the people who have presented up to this point and to all of you for taking the time to commit to sit down and be present for these really, really important topics. So uh, it is my absolute pleasure, pleasure to introduce uh, my colleague, my friend, and a phenomenal leader in the field of creative aging and arts and health, Kunle Adewale. Kunle is a multimedia artist from Nigeria. Um, he facilitates intergenerational artistic programs um, as well as programs for diverse older adults and people living with dementia in Nigeria, the US, the UK, and other parts of Europe. He's very prolific. He's very active. I honestly don't know when he sleeps because um, I personally know that he has two toddlers, so I really don't know if he actually sleeps. Um, and he does a, a lot of his work recently has been using arts and immersive creative technologies. And I know that he'll be sharing about some of that today, which is really exciting. Uh, Kunle is the founder and executive director of the Arts in Medicine Projects and the Global Arts in Medicine Fellowship, which is a phenomenal, well, I think he'll speak a little bit about that. He's also a senior Atlantic fellow for equity and brain health at the Global Brain Health Institute. That is how we met. And he is a curator and global development lead for the Global South Arts and Health Week, which is coming up this September, I believe. And in 2022, Kunle was endorsed by the Arts Council of England as a global talent exceptional leader. And he is a member of the steering committee of the World Health Organization Jamil Arts and Health Lab and the WHO Arts and Wellbeing Cohort, through which, in which capacity he's developing resources and arts practice and the ethics of care. So, and that is literally just a tiny tip of the iceberg of the incredible work that Kunle has done in, uh, in creative aging and in arts and health. So over to you, Kunle. Can't wait to come back in about 15, 20 minutes to connect in conversation. Amazing. Uh, so excited to join everyone today. And um, it's been so much of fireworks and inspiration from yesterday and all through the chat box was on fire. I tell you, from the keynote speaker to everyone that presented yesterday, it was such um, an incredible experience. And again, today being part of uh, the entire program from the beginning up to now, there's so much to just unpack and then it will take months to really process everything that is said here. I tell you, you it, this is not something you can unpack in one week or one month, you, it will take you months. Right, and then my work here today is just to kind of just add a bit to what has been said, uh, just to like, uh, you know, share my own perspective, and share my own knowledge and my own practice over the years um, as a visual artist, as a multimedia um, art and health practitioner based here in Manchester in the United Kingdom. So primarily I'm from Nigeria, uh, left Nigeria last year <laughs> to the UK to just expand the kind of work that we do to connect and collaborate more with people who work uh, you know, in this space, uh, supporting the aging population and all of that. So today I'm going to focus more on the use of uh, creative technologies. And uh, as we talk about cultural agency, um, I will do that very quickly. Okay, so um, my, what my conversation focus on today is going to be more of cultural agency and uh, co-designing creative practice with older person and um, just talk a bit of um, few programs and projects that we've done over time. Um, for me, agency is a, is a fundamental component of creative practice and you know for older persons promoting authenticity 
and it inclusivity for program design and system change, put it that way. Um, thinking about the deployment of uh, creative technologies uh, as we use in our program, the art and medicine projects, and thinking about how older adults really um, use these immersive technologies as a form of creative expression, which is very, very personal for them and kind of like emotional process. So which give them this sense of identity and a sense of belonging, you know, within the context of, you know, working uh, and utilizing technology that is being developed and utilized for older person within the global space. So the co-design and creative practices with older persons specifically focuses on involving older individuals in designing and developing cultural activities and initiatives. It recognizes that older adults possess unique perspectives and skills and creativity that can contribute to the cultural fabric of the society. By engaging older persons in co-design processes, their voices and needs and aspirations are incorporated into the development of cultural projects, programs, or events. Agency enables older adults to make decisions about what to create, how to create, and how it is to be shared with others, and for what purpose as well. To this end, so creative practitioners and their partners across sectors who are designing artistic interventions to improve older person's health, social connections, and overall well-being must involve older persons as key collaborators, celebrate their work publicly, and empower them to tell their stories differently. So when art and aging leaders approach their work as equal partner to service users, older persons are empowered to continue to live their best lives and thrive regardless of their health or social economic status. I'm gonna use this particular um, project that we did, which is the use of the VR for brain and mental health of Nigerian seniors. Uh, what we did, how we co-designed, how we co-curated the experience with older person and how we executed the entire project. Um, we kind of gathered about, I think almost about seven care home in Lagos, Nigeria participated in these, the use of virtual reality, you know, in terms of, you know, supporting their brain health and also supporting their mental health as well. And so we, we had what we had co-design, co-productions and the digital art, you know, internet, music, VR experience and the art exhibition that we had. So we, we had like 60, um, we had participants who are like age 60 upward and a cis elderly care home in Lagos, Nigeria. And then, so I would say everything for us when you're thinking about uh, co-designing and cultural agency, everything begins with conversation, right? You know, we can't really impose our idea or ideologies uh, when we go into this care home as to engage, you know, with participants and service users in our program. So it's more of having meaningful, deep, not surface conversation because all of this conversation help to unveil, it helps to kind of, uh, um removes um stereotypes around you know how we view how we perceive how we engage how we interact you know with you know the older persons in our program so everything begins with conversation and um you know working with this care home we, we work with like um care homes for the elderly uh the elderly group in the community and community day center for the elderly so this three uh, core areas where the, you know, the part we looked at as we engage in the use of creative uh, technologies. And we talked about the use of creative te technologies for dignity, for equity, for humanity, and for diversity. All of these are very important. Uh, knowing fully aware that when it comes to, you know, the use of creative technologies, we see more of the youth population, the younger population in Nigeria who consider the use of technology very fascinating and very interesting. But again, thinking about the use of technology, especially with the use of creative technologies, uh, older persons are not really given you know, the level of attention that is required or 
being put at the center, center of you know, focus in, in terms of conversation and engagement. And it was more very, uh, being very pragmatic and very intentional, you know, ensuring that you know, all the persons are, you know, are the center of the design for this particular program and how and what that experience actually means for them. So in, in, in designing and in doing this, you know, this experience, you know, we explore different you know, applications like helium, tree, you know, even the use of virtual um the the VR uh, YouTube channel to just give all of these seniors uh, meaningful experiences as it were. Um, what were the things that these seniors really interacted with, you know, in the VR headsets, some of them like music and dance and movement, comedy skits and movies, guided meditation, and mindfulness, art, sport, and tourism. Um, as somebody who is very passionate about the use of technologies, right? I, one of the things I found out as a young person is the content in the VR headset, headsets they're very westernized. They are very highly westernized in a way that, you know, some of them doesn't even have cultural representation, does not really have things that in a way, you know, uh, say the indigenous population will actually relate with. I'm talking about within the, cons within the context of, you know, engaging the Nigerian population, right? So some of the apps that were designed were kind of like not really uh, in alignment with the interests of the population that we really did this with. So most of the music that we, we did were focused on indigenous music, uh, indigenous dance and movement, comedy skits and movies that these persons and these people were very genuinely interested in, right? I uh, talk about even the use of arts, you know, some of them talking about, you know, the local foods, you know, some of them remember when they, were, when they were farmers, when they were on the farm, you know, and then they get to recreate those experiences during this, uh, during the process, during the engagement. Um, yeah, cultural prosperity versus digital technology content poverty. So there's a content poverty, there is a tech poverty. Right, you know, um, most of the population that we work with, some of them are not really educated, right? Some of them are, you know, some of them actually are from the rural areas, right? Why we have a very few numbers of them that are kind of like elite or educated. So how do we create a balance, you know, in co-designing, in creating experience, a meaningful experience, a sustainable experience, a lasting experience, you know, for, a group of elders in the community that exists and coexists within the community, but with different level of education, health status, economic you know, status as well, right? So um, for us, the use of VR helped to like bridge the gap you know, through a co-creation process. So we provided a wide range of VR experiences, an option for seniors based on their preferences, this, of course, deepens their creative experience and connection with tech-based therapy sessions. So it's more of what the desire is what they deserve. What they desire was what we designed. And I think this is what this is about. It's more of thinking about the desires of the seniors and how we design you know, content that aligns with their desire to be able to give them a meaningful, you know, deep connection and experience that they can never forget. So... Um, of course, one of one of the sessions we had include uh, the use of, you know, iPads, you know, in creating digital art. Many of them, about ninety eight or ninety nine point nine percent of these people have never touched VR before, never. Although a few of them are probably like touch uh, maybe um, the, the, the iPads, but then never knew that they could use the iPad as a launch pad for creative expressions. And then this, of course, you know, give them that opportunity and that accessibility, you know, to be able to create something that really resonates and connect with them. Some of them, of course, you know, started listening to music and their favorite music. During these engagements, some of these older persons even created their own self portraits. You can, it's just an incre incredible experience to see that other persons could use technology to make art. 
are not just making art, but also to create what, how they want to be represented. They don't want to be represented as somebody who is very close to the end of life, somebody, somebody who is about to die, somebody who doesn't have anything again to live for. But again, <laughs> thinking about some of the expressions of this older person is just incredible. It's phenomenal from self-portrait to digitalizing some of the favorite legend musicians, the Nigerian musicians, some of them are able to African, um, you know, uh, talk about footballers like Abede Pele from Bra Brazil, right? To see how they create, you know, layers of expressions from sports to personal portrait to music, legend and icon, and even to iconic places such as even like traveling as far as Ghana, Accra, Ghana. It's beautiful to see how these older person are exploring, you know, indigenous content for self-expression. At the end of the day, after creating some of the works they did, you know, during our sessions, you know, we had this public art exhibition where some of them, you know, got to see some of the works they created, the fruits they created, the flowers they created. So our work as cultural collaborators or collaborators is not to govern the outcome of the creative process of older persons. Our responsibility is to allow freedom of expression without interrupting or micromanaging engagement. So I will take that again, that our work as cultural collaborators is not to govern the outcome of the, the creative process of older persons. Rather, our responsibility is to allow freedom of expression without interrupting or micromanaging engagement. So again, the agency in this context, you know, what we did is about representation. It puts seniors in a place of dignity where they can see themselves and can be seen by others, not as weak individuals, but as solid institutions to be acknowledged. Why we're designing, you know, the use of VR for older person? These are things that we have to look at. We, we, we looked at the residents were not introduced to the content that will make them feel dizzy or lose mobility. And of course, to avoid the risk of falls or injury, we stick to digital content they feel very comfortable with. This is very important for us to check that they are okay with the use of asset. Like I said, many of them had never used the asset before, never. So all of these, you know, it's very important. It's not like checking, do you want this? Would you want to experience this? Is this okay for you to use? And then of course they gave a yes, they gave a go ahead and then we're able to move forward. Co-designing creative practice for seniors is also about empowering the ecosystem by collaborating with institutions, family members, peers and staff members to share best practices in the best interest of older, older adults. So one of the things we did during this, during this the use, use of VR, you know, for the older person was to invite, you know, the carers that work with them because it's all about building relationship. It's all about building community, a thriving, a living, a joyful, a community that feel very connected that is not what like under resource in a way. And I think it's more bringing everybody together that works in that particular space. A few of the testimonials from these seniors, I'll read this very quickly. Some of them mentioned that the VR experience gives them a feeling that they can never forget. This particular senior mentioned, he said, this is the first time of seeing a VR headset. It is also my first time experiencing it. I stood up to dance when the music entered my brain. It elevated my spirit. Another person mentioned was a caregiver. She said, the VR experience improved their moods. It brought back good memories and they were more interactive. This caregiver spoke about this. At first I thought it was meant for, mentally for younger ones for gaming, but looking at the elderly ones, putting it on, trying to copy dances and all. I was delighted with the sight and they felt so alive. They expressed themselves like they were still in that young form. Dancing is so good. 
they look brighter and refreshed and are so pleased with what they did. And we are happy about the VR session. They don't mind doing this every day. Some of them even express their experiences saying they were not so stiff after all. Co-designing cool creative practices with older persons promotes intergenerational dialogue and empowerment of older individuals. It acknowledges the value of their lived experiences and seeks to create opportunities for meaningful participation and engagement in cultural activities. This approach, of course, helps to challenge ageist stereotypes and foster a more inclusive and diverse cultural landscape. In conclusion, I will say this, let us unite our effort to unlock the immersed creative potential that lies within the older persons by embracing collaboration, valuing authentic voices, fostering the intergenerational connection, providing accessible spaces and advocating for policy support. We can co-design creative practices that empower older individuals and enrich our entire society. Together, let us champion cultural agency and create a future where every person, regardless of age, class, tribe, race, ethnic city, health status, is recognized as an invaluable contributor to our cultural tapestry. Thank you. For more information about the 2023 International Creative Aging Summit and to download our summit resource guide, please visit www.lifetimearts.org slash ICAS-2023. And be sure to check out Lifetime Arts Professional Development Resources and Services linked in the description below.